Okay, students, this is part B of our activity. We're going to be doing an absorbance spectrum. Please refer to the uh, brief sort of lecture introduction that I gave you about the nature of the absorption of light by different substances. The important thing here is that we want to track what is the absorbance of our test solution at different wavelengths of light. Don't forget, wavelength is typically recorded in nanometers, and we're going to track the absorbance of a solution at different wavelengths. We're going to plot the absorbance versus the wavelength, and in most cases, we will get one, maybe more than one, but hopefully one major peak here. And remember that what we're trying to find out is what is the wavelength at which the substance absorbs the most light? So we're going to say that the wavelength that corresponds to that peak, we're going to call that lambda max. Lambda is the symbol that we use in Greek for the wavelength and max because that is the wavelength at which the substance has the maximum absorbance. All right, students, remember that in part A of this activity, you made a solution that is 0 0.200 molar in this compound called uh, viridis or viridis. And we're going to call that our test solution. That is the one we're going to use to draw this absorbance spectrum that we talked about. Okay, so let's go and look at how you will work with your solution and how, will you, how you will set up your spectrometer, the instrument we're going to use to track the absorbance of our solution at different wavelengths. All right? Okay, this is part B of our activity. And for this part of the activity, we're going to be using a spectrometer. And this here is the Spectronic 20. It's a very old machine and uh, actually they've been discontinued, but we still have them in the lab and this is what you would use if you were here uh, in person. Uh, first thing I wanna point out is that on the top of the panel in the machine, there is a picture and it walks you. Let me go a little closer here and you can see the sequence in which you do things and each number in the sequence points to an aspect or an item on the picture. So for example, you can see here, number one, it says turn on, warm up 15 minutes. And you can see that the number one is pointing to that button. So I'm gonna go here and find that button and I am going to turn it on. And as you can see now, the machine's display is lit and we're gonna leave it there for 15 minutes so that the lamp can warm up. Okay, students, this is the test solution that we made in part A. You can see that it has like a green color. Uh, it is translucent, which means that light can go through. And we're going to talk a little bit about the reason for the uh, green color uh, in a moment. Now, we're also going to be using this test solution in part C, and we're going to make further dilutions of it so it's difficult to work with the tiny spout or opening that this thing has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my test solution to a small beaker so that I can do the rest of the manipulations. So very carefully, I'm going to take off the cap here and I'm going to pour it into this beaker here. And I'm going to hold it in here now because I'm going to be doing several things with this. Uh, I don't want it to evaporate a whole lot to where the, you know, concentration gets altered. So I'm going to get a watch glass and I'm going to use it as a lid to cover it while I do the next set of things. Now, an important thing is that when you do uh, spectroscopy, you need to have a baseline. You need to have something called a blank. 
So there are several things that we do here. Okay, notice, I'm gonna push this a little bit aside. I have a test tube rack here with different kinds of test tubes. And in part C, we're gonna be using these test tubes here to do some of our dilutions of the test solution, the green one here. Now, here's the thing. Uh, these test tubes are of fine quality for doing chemical work, but you cannot guarantee that this test tube that I'm holding here on the left and the test tube on the right, even though they're the same brand, they have the exact same optical properties. So for that reason, when we do spectroscopy, we use special kinds of test tubes that we call cuvettes. And the idea is that as long as these cuvettes are the same brand and the same batch, we can guarantee that their optical properties are the same. So what I'm gonna do is in one of these cuvettes, I'm going to put, I'm sorry, I think I banged the table there. I'm gonna put just water and I'm gonna fill it up maybe like a, a third of the way up. And then in the other one, I'm gonna use a dispenser pipette, remember these? And I'm gonna use it to pour in some of my test solution. So now I have my water and my test solution in these two tubes, glass tubes that I call cuvettes. And that is what I'm gonna bring over now to my spectrometer. Okay, before we go on to doing our spectrum, let's think about this for a moment. <clears throat> this is a color wheel. You may be familiar uh, with these from your elementary school art class. And it shows the colors pretty much of the rainbow and it puts on the outside the corresponding wavelength ranges for each one of those. So for example, you know, yellow is between 560, 590 nanometers. Uh, you know, blue is between 430, 480 nanometers. Now the important principle here is the following. The color of the solution is the complementary color of the color represented by lambda max. So let's say for example that your substance shows that it absorbs in the range of yellow from 560 to 590 nanometers. Well that means that because it absorbs that range of wavelengths the solution is very likely to have a violet or purple color, okay? So let's say that we determine from looking at our solution that our solution is in the green range, right? It's somewhere in there. It is, this is our viridis dye that we just made a solution of. So this is uh, the color. So what does that tell me then, right? about what I should expect for it to have as its uh, absorbance maximum. Well, it should be somewhere in here, right? You expect if this is green, you, it should absorb in the red range. Now, if you look at it closely, you realize that uh, there was a narrower net range. It was kind of like somewhere in here between green and blue. So that'd be perhaps a more accurate kind of representation and so that means that you expect your absorbance to be somewhere in here, right? So this is the expected lambda max for our viridis dye, all right? So I'm gonna put that as number three. That means that when we do our spectrum analysis, we wanna run the spectrometer somewhere in that range probably between you know, 600 to 680 or something nanometers. And that way we save ourselves a lot of time trying to scan all the way from 400 all the way around to 750 nanometers. All right. Okay, students, we're back here at the spectrometer. I brought over my uh, test tube rack with my cuvettes. Remember, I have a cuvette that has water in it and one that has my test solution, my 0.200 molar viridis, right? So over here is the spectrometer. Let me take you there so we can see some features on it. By now, the lamp that's inside the spectrometer should have warmed up, but we have to set the correct wavelength. Now notice here, 
It says here, step number two, set wavelength, and it points to this button over here, right? Which is this one on the machine, it says wavelength. I'm gonna start at 610. According to the discussion we just had uh, about the color wheel. So I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna get that to 610. Now, one thing that's important is that it says here in step number three, select filter position. Some of these, not all of them have this filter here that allows you to get more accurate results. Notice that right now it is reading in the region of 340 to 599. But since we're starting above that, we're gonna flip it over here to the 600 to 950 region, okay? So we're gonna do that. Now our next step says, step number four, select 0% T. And it points out to this button here, number four, which is this one down here. Notice that right now, the machine is displaying transmittance and it says 10.2 but there is nothing in the chamber. And until you put a cuvette inside the chamber, the system's gonna be closed, which means there should be zero light being transmitted through this chamber. So I'm gonna use that button down here, and I'm gonna move this until I get the transmittance up on the display back to zero, which is where it should be. And you have to calibrate this only at the beginning of the procedure. You don't have to do this every single time uh, during the measurements, okay? So I'm there at about zero, okay? And it might flip a little bit around, it's okay. Doesn't matter, all right? So we've done that. Now our next step says, step number five, insert blank. So the blank is our cuvette that has just water in it. Remember, uh, the cuvette itself and water itself will have a little bit of absorbance. So I wanna measure my solution against the baseline, against the background of absorbance generated by the glass and by the water themselves. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna open my chamber, I'm gonna put in my cuvette, and notice that there's a line here at the front of the chamber, and there is a little marking on the side of the cuvette I want to line those up. So I'm going to insert it so that that marking on the cuvette lines up with the line that's there on the chamber. I'm going to close the chamber and let's see what I see. Okay, at this point I have water, but it says here, number six, I want to set 100% T or zero absorbance. In other words, I want to remove the background absorbance of the water and the cuvette so it says here that we're gonna use, this is step number six, and it says that we use this knob over here. That's the one on the right. So I'm gonna use that one now, and I'm gonna turn it so that this here, first of all, I'm sorry, I'm gonna set the mode here, and change it so that it reads absorbance, and you can see it's blinking there. So now I'm gonna go down here and turn this knob over here that allows me to bring it to zero absorbance. Now, which way you turn, I mean, you might go one way and it might not do, oh, here it goes, it's changing, okay? So I'm removing all of the residual absorbance and I'm gonna bring it all the way down until it's, oops, it just went over a little bit there. So again, it's very sensitive. So you wanna bring it back to zero and now you have your baseline absorbance at zero. It'll always flip a couple, a little bit. So don't worry about that. Uh, three decimals, essentially that is your uh, uncertain digit. So it's okay if it's, uh, you know, goes around, you know, plus one, plus 0 0.001, minus 0 0.001. Okay, so now we have our spectrometer set up to read the absorbance at 610. So like it says here now, number seven, we're going to insert our sample. So we're gonna take very carefully, we're gonna open the chamber, take out the water, now take our sample. And again, this is a same cuvette, so it should have the same optical properties. I wanna line it up so that it 
matches the, the sign there on the cuvette with the line in front of the spectrometer. And I'm gonna close it, and now I'm gonna read, and it says 0 0.704, 0 0.705, somewhere in there, all right? All right, students, you may or may not be using a lab notebook. Uh, you probably are gonna get a pre-printed data table to analyze, but let's say that you're doing this in, in the lab, and I'm borrowing here from a former student of mine. This was Wanda. She was from some country out in Eastern Europe, and uh, it's funny, she always dressed in different variations of red, and she was always hanging out with this guy. You know what, I never knew his name. He was like a DJ, and so he always used his, uh, you know, his DJ name, Vision. And they were always hanging out together. But uh, so Wanda is going to be doing this experiment. And we just saw uh, in our little uh, analysis here, oops, let me turn it here, that at uh, 610, she had like 0.704. So we've already prepared this table here. It tells me what the test solution is. These are the wavelengths in nanometers we're going to test. And we saw that for 610, she had. 0.704. So now we're going to set up the next reading, which will be at 620. So let's go back here to our spectrometer. Okay, we're going to come back here. And what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to remove our sample. And we're going to put in the blank again. But Let's say that, for example, you notice that you accidentally touched the cuvette with your hands over there. And so you may have like as much there. Some, some of your uh, skin oils may have rubbed off. It's very important you keep it clean. So we're going to be using Kim wipes for this. All right. And just take a Kim wipe and kind of like wipe it down. Don't use a regular paper towel because what might happen is you might leave some fiber residue in there. Okay, we're going to put it back in there just like we did before, lining up the uh, little uh, label here on the test tube with the line on the spectrometer. We're going to close the chamber and now we're going to change the wavelength. Our next reading will be at 620. So I'm going to put this back at 620. I'm going to turn it over here. Bring it to 620. And then now I have to readjust the zero. Notice that it's not zero anymore like it was before. The reason is that, like I said, the water and the glass of the cuvette do have some optical properties. And so there's some background or baseline or residual absorbance. And so every time you switch the wavelength, you're going to have to recalibrate the spectrometer back to zero. So Again, we're going to use the knob here on the bottom right to bring this back to zero. Very carefully. You might overshoot it, but that's okay. Just play with it until you get the hang of it. And we're going to bring it back to zero. And now it's at zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my cuvette. And I am going to put back in my sample. This is my test solution. And let's see what it tells us. Okay, so that's 0 0.935, 0 0.940, somewhere in there. It looks like it's setting at 0.935. So remember, that last digit is uncertain anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a little blurry perhaps. Let's see if I can focus a little bit. No. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to Wanda's data notebook, her lab notebook. I'm going to switch this down here a little bit so I can get there. And remember that we said that the value that she had gotten here for the second uh, reading, which was going to be, um, let's see if I can make this thing fit here. It was going to be 620. We said it was at 0 0.935. So 0 0.935 absorbance. And we typically don't have units for absorbance, as you saw in my explanation. It's a logarithmic function. Okay, so we're going to keep doing this 
uh, and go along the other values in here, 630, 640. We're going to go up to 670, and then we'll come back and see what we get. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so after doing that process over several times, uh, Wanda has the data for different uh, wavelengths. And we're going to go now to the part where we take this data to Excel and we draw an absorbance spectrum. However, from the data itself, you can probably guesstimate what the lambda max is. So I'm going to put this here as a note on the right. So I would say that this looks like this is our wavelength of maximum absorption already all right it looks like it's at 630 nanometers but we'll now have to draw the graph to see if the graph confirms our initial estimate